people are fairly comfortable with, uh, with taking photographs. But when you're dealing with photogrammetry, okay, even if you're a photographer, so there were a bunch of photographers that were here. When you're dealing with landscape photography or object photography, there's a difference between taking a photo for artistic purposes and taking a photo for photogrammetry, for building and constructing a really, really good model. Okay, so you get, you in order to do so, you need to do two things. One is you need to get to know your camera and the other one is you need to be able to take the proper photos okay so let me just talk about some of the most important camera settings here and uh and kind of go from there so the first one i'm going to talk about is iso okay so if you have a camera like this you'll be able to adjust the iso and for many of my photos i shoot manual okay i just shoot manual all the time because i have the greatest control and you can get better shots for photogrammetry so the iso has to do with how sensitive the camera is going to be, or the sensor is going to be to lighting. So if you have a very low ISO number, like 50 or 100, that's great for shooting outdoors when it's a very, very sunny day. You want to use ISO 100 or 50 or, or something like that, and you're, you'll take perfectly fine photos. On the other side, if you're in a scenario where you have very low lighting, it's dusk, the light is going down, you're in a forest, it, there's not a lot of good lighting around, then you'll want to bump up the ISO, ISO 800, ISO 400, something like that. And even at nighttime, so if you're in very, very low light conditions and people that do, for example, private investigation or the police when they're doing surveillance, right? They're gonna have a camera that's got a very high ISO number and they can take a picture at night that almost looks like daytime. Now, the downside to a high ISO is gonna be noise. And if you look at the image on the left and you look at the image on the right, you can probably already start to see there are some very, very subtle differences, but not a lot, right? But some subtle differences. But what happens if we zoom in? Okay, if I zoom in on this thing, now, what do you see? Look at the image on the uh, left here where we have an ISO of 50, right? These look fairly crisp, right? It looks pretty good. But if we look on the right here, we get all kinds of noise, right? There's all kinds of problems here with grain and noise. Now you have to keep in mind that the photogrammetry software is going to be looking for common features and common points. If it's looking on the pixel level for points or colors or, or things which are consistent between one image and another image, and one image is really, really grainy or, or all the images are grainy, it's going to have a problem finding or reconstructing these 3D points, okay? So low ISO number is really, really important, okay? So having a low ISO is really important. All right, aperture. So aperture defines how much light is getting inside of the lens. Okay, so this little opening that's here, right, we can open this up really, really wide, or we can make it very, very small. And basically, you know, if you have a high F number, if you have an F28, F22, the opening is small. If you have a low F number, so you'll see F2, F2.8, okay, then you have a very big opening. So it's actually, it's kind of the other way around. Large number, small opening, low number, big opening. Okay, and it just, it's a the number is actually a ratio, uh, I believe, to the focal length. But anyway, the point here is that if you make it small, right, and you make it big, it has an effect on the object that you're photographing. So what's the difference? Well, you would think, let's open it up and get lots of light in, right? Let's bring a lot of light in. That could be useful. But here's the problem. When we have a very low F number, you get a lot of light. You definitely get a lot of light. But what you do is when you're getting up close to an object, you severely reduce your depth of field. Okay, so the part of the image in the foreground, in the background, which is in focus, becomes severely limited. It becomes very, very short, very small. When you use a high F number, okay, you extend your depth of field. Okay, it becomes much, much wider. So this is why you can see that when we start getting blurry, um, uh, a blurry image out here down at the bottom and then down at the end, and there's no comparison to this image on the left. It's just way, way, way different. So um, what we want is as much of the image or the object in focus as possible, right? Especially when we're close. When you're far away, it's not as much of an issue, but when you're close, it is an issue. 
Now, what is the issue around if I want a low ISO, so I reduce the sensitivity of the sensor, and then I use a high F number, so that means I make the, the opening very, very small, okay, I don't have a lot of uh, light entering the lens, right? It's a very gentle bleeding of light that's going into the sensor, which means I need a very long shutter speed. I need, I need more time. I have to keep the shutter open longer. And I think most of you know this, that, you know, if you have a camera in your hand, right, and you're moving, you can get blurring very easily. Now, in this case here, we're showing you some, I'm showing you some different things. So at one five hundredth of a second, you know, this person that's jogging, you know, is very, is captured very crisp, right? We've frozen them in their image and we don't get any blurring. When we start going down one, um, one twenty-fifth of a second, we start seeing some blurring. One sixtieth, plenty of blurring, and then one fifteenth of a second is just a mess. We don't really see anything at all. Now, if you're going to be holding a camera, so normally when you're doing photogrammetry, you're not dealing with a subject that's running. Okay, what you're dealing with is an object that's still, and you're holding the camera. Right, and so that I'm assuming you're not using a tripod. In that case, if you have a shutter speed that is below one eightieth of a second or so. Okay, it's probably not a good option for you. Okay, you're probably going to need a tripod. Once you're at 1 15th, 1 20th, uh, 1 60th of a second, you really, really need to consider using a tripod. Okay, so think about it that way 1 80th of a second or so. And uh, below that, you know, if, it, if you're extended longer, uh, longer periods of, of uh, exposure or, or, or longer shutter speeds, then um, you're definitely going to need a tripod. And I use that sometimes my exposure time is sometimes eight seconds or three seconds when I'm doing, uh, you know, a very, very small object. I've had even 20 seconds, 30 seconds. It just depends on what you're doing. Those three things, remember that ISO, right? The F-stop number and the shutter speed. Those three things you need to always consider with photogrammetry. Yes, you can turn this to automatic. You can just take photos and then go and try it and you could get lucky, whatever, but then you may be unlucky. If you sort of take some precautions beforehand, then um, you, know, you can kind of go from there.